and we're going to build a can, okay? A cylinder can. We want the can to be able to hold 60 cubic inches of material. So the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times the height. And we know that we want the volume to be 60. So let's put in 60 for the volume equals pi r squared height. And then because we're going to use it in a minute, let's solve this for h. Okay, we need to get the H by itself. So that's going to be 60 divided by pi r squared. Now let's just hold off with that. Remember that's here. We're going to have to come back and get that in a minute. All right, what we want to do is we want to build this can so it'll hold those 60 cubic inches. But if we're in uh, manufacturing, we, won't, we don't want to waste any material building the can. So we want to minimize the cost of the can and what would minimize it would be to make the surface area as small as possible. Now the surface area of a can is a little tricky. So let's call S, let's use S for surface area. And let's think about this. We've got the top of the can which is a circle. And so we need that area. Well the area of a circle is pi r squared. Now, we've got to also make the bottom of the can, which would be another circle. So we're going to have another pi r squared on the bottom. And so if we add those together, that's 2 pi r squared. All right, then we need to make the side of the can. And this is where we have to visualize it a little bit. Imagine this was just a tube. Okay, it didn't have a top and the bottom and we were to slice it down the side and unroll it. Okay, so imagine taking a tube or a cylinder or just take a sheet of paper and roll it into a, a circle, a cylinder. Then if you unroll it, you basically have a rectangle shape. And so we would need the area of that rectangle. Well, the height of the rectangle would be the height that we're using here, H. But what would the length of the top edge be? Well, if you visualize it here, if we unwrap it, the top edge would be the circumference of this circle, the distance around this circle. And so the circumference formula is pi times the diameter. Well, and to keep from adding another variable for diameter, remember the diameter is 2 times the radius. So I'm going to rearrange this as 2 pi r h. So there is our formula for the surface area. Now as before, we only want two variables. So that's why we solved this one for h, so we can remove the h from the formula here. So let's plug that in. So our surface area is going to be 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r 60 over pi r squared. And now if we clean this up, we've got a pi on the top and on the bottom, so those cancel out. We've got an r on the top and 2 on the bottom, so one of those two cancels. And we have 2 pi r squared plus 2 times 60, that's 120, over r. Now, before we take the derivative so we can find the critical point, let's just come over here and remember that 120 divided by r could be written as 120 r to the minus 1. We put it in this form, now we've got an exponent, we can use the power rule. So, derivative. The derivative of the surface area is 2 times 2, so 4 pi r. Now, if we think of this as 120 r to the minus 1, we bring the minus 1 out, 
So that gives us minus 120 r to the minus 2. We subtract 1 from the exponent that gives us minus 2. And if I simplify this just a hair, I'm going to kind of use the same property that we did to pull the r up there to make it negative 1. Since this is negative 2, we're going to move it back down. And it's going to be r squared on the bottom. So there's our derivative. To find the critical points, we're going to make the surface area, or I'm sorry, we're going to make the derivative 0. So 4 pi r minus 120 over r squared. Let's move the 120 to the other side. That'll make it positive. So 120 over r squared equals 4 pi r. Let's multiply both sides by r squared to get rid of our fraction. That'll leave us with 120 equals 4 pi r to the third. Let's move up here. We want to get r to the third by itself, so we're going to divide by 4 pi. So that gives us r to the third equals 120 divided by 4 pi. Now, how do we get the r by itself? Well, if it's r to the third, the opposite would be the cube root. So what we need is the cube root of 120 over 4 pi. And most calculators should have a cube root button on it. So if we take the cube root of 120 over 4 pi, we get about 2.12. Since we're dealing with cubic inches at the beginning, this tells us in order to minimize the amount of material that we're going to use to make this can, we need to make a radius a little bit bigger than 2, about 2.12 inches, and that will minimize the surface area of the can and still hold our 60 cubic inches.